Hi there. Don't laugh at me. I haven't done many videos before. So I thought what I would do this time is read a little excerpt from my book. Okay. Hang tight. Grounded. Mick Meyer let his head fall back against the crunchy pillow, the ER doc's pronouncement adding to the swirling nausea that confirmed he'd rung his bell, but good. No flying until further notice, the doctor reiterated the point as if he expected Mick to argue. Brain injury isn't something to fool around with. His forehead tingled. He went to lift his hand, but found he couldn't. So weak, so heavy. Sorry about that, the doctor said. You are not what I'd call an ideal patient. I'd take it off if you promised to stay calm. Restraints. He'd been fighting. So much pain. Yeah, what happened? Was someone here? A girl. Woman. With cool hands. So good. His arm free now, Mick touched his forehead. There. She touched him there. A song from his childhood drifted into his mind. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. His gray matter felt like porridge. He wiggled his toes. Check. The piggies at least weren't squealing. That made one part of him that was okay. Oh, he was royally messed up. Concussion, Mick said, keeping his eyes closed. You said mild concussion. He felt like he'd fallen into a cement mixer. Still a brain injury. The doc used a don't be an idiot tone. But you've trashed your shoulder too. Sprained your knee as well, though you might you might have done that, trying to kick yourself off the gurney. Trashed? His voice sounded like it was coming from the end of a long tunnel. Is that a technical term? Yep, the doc said. Dislocated. We're going to put it back in place. Uh, as soon as we've ruled out a fracture. We can't put you under, so it won't be fun, but it'll be fast, I promise. Dave here will get you ready. You're going to hate him. Mick opened his eyes as the doctor passed the chart to another man in the doorway and strode off to his next patient. I'm Dave. You probably don't remember, but I'll be your torturer tonight, the nurse smiled. I hear you crashed your plane. You're in pretty good shape, considering. Mick winced. He hadn't crashed. He'd never crashed. He'd been flying for 12 years and had a perfect record. Besides, I crash would have killed him, wouldn't it? I didn't crash. Your friends say otherwise. They're waiting outside. Pretty persistent. Beer. Snowmobiles. Laughter. Fish frying on a cast iron skillet. Chad Stagg. The memory brought a rush of relief. Can I see them? Dave poked his head out the door. One of you can come in. Five minutes. That's it. He's got a full dance card tonight. Whew, you've been living rough, haven't you? A chorus of, hey, buddy, and nice going, and way to cap off a guy's getaway, sounded through the door, setting off fireworks inside his skull. He tried to put names to voices without success. Chad jostled Mick's good shoulder. You look like crap, man. I feel fantastic. Mick tucked his bad arm tightly against his belly. The overhead lights had a particularly piercing quality. You guys totally overreacted. Logan's kicking himself that he didn't get it on video. YouTube would have loved that. Mick forced himself to concentrate. A minute later, his memory bank creaked open. Logan, construction guy, was going to help fix up, Ed fix up Edge's lodge. Not many pilots can brag they nearly hit themselves with their own plane, Chad said. Glad you enjoyed it. Mick tried to smile. I'm here all week, folks or more, according to the doc. Eric said the slip and fall would have been the real YouTube winner. Chad's brother. He scraped the inside of his brain pan. Yes, Mick had given Eric the idea to hold Chad's bachelor party at the fishing lodge. He'd been scheduled to fly in from Alaska to check out the place anyway. Two birds, one stone. They'd had a great time, until tonight, when Mick fired up the Cessna, merely to move it a few hundred yards to protect it from the wind. He wasn't even sure what happened, except that he landed on his head. No need to thank us for saving your life, Chad said. You'd have done the same thing. You know, if you were as tough as us and could walk and chew gum at the same time. Bet you didn't know I could do cartwheels. Talking was almost as much work as thinking. That wasn't a cartwheel. That was a cry for help. Freaked out Oz, that's for sure. Oz? 
How many guys had been there? Yeah, Austin, Chad frowned. You know, the guy who lives on the ranch next door, bee farmer? Nothing. Under the circumstances, Mick said, pretending he wasn't panicking inside. I handled that plane pretty damn nicely. <laughs> Eric gave you a solid 8 out of 10. Docked you two points on account of botching the dismount. Chad wrinkled his nose. By the way, we're calling it a crash for the sake of your pride, because a parking accident? Buddy, that's just lame. Mick couldn't argue with that. Is my plane okay? I don't know. It looked like a rock caught one of the tires. She was a tough little bird, but shit happened. Scenes flickered across Mick's mind like fractured movie frames. His friends taking turns, helping him limp across the frozen lake to the cabin, packing him into the truck, carrying him into the ER. Mick went to lift his hand to his face, but a slicing pain lanced through his shoulder. An aura of rotting garbage drifted in, tightening his gut momentarily. Oh, you don't want to do that. Chad shook his head grimly. It's dislocated. Right. Dislocated. Trashed. His head hurt like a son of a bitch, and he wished that woman with the cool hands would come and send Chad away. He was so, so tired. I need, I need to get out of here, he said. Or, or thought he said. Chad's voice was so much louder than his. He had to fix the plane. He had a month to work on the lodge. After that, he had charters lined up from here to Alaska. Cold sweat broke out over his body. Had the light gotten brighter? Was the room moving? The nurse came back into the room. Visits up. They're ready for him and imaging. Mick gulped with relief. His throat wasn't working right. Too much sound. Too much brightness. Too much smell. Too much everything. He just wanted to be alone, to sleep, and he really, really didn't want to puke again. A beautiful, horrified face, soft, cool hands on his brow, the sweet whiff of chocolate. The stench of rot dissipated. Thanks. T tell the guys thanks, too, Mick said. Chad didn't seem to hear this. Another nudge, this time on his leg, sent a wave of pain shooting through Mick. Perspiration trickled down his temple. The antiseptic hospital odors overtook the essence of cocoa and turned his stomach. His eyes felt like they were being stabbed with icicles. He tasted bile at the back of his throat. His face felt hot and his extremities tingled. Hey, buddy, Chad leaned in. Too loud, too close. Get better, you hear? Mick tried to nod, but a muscle in his neck spasmed. Staff is staying for a bit. Maddie will keep him posted on how are you doing. How you're doing, Chad added. Staff? Maddie? Was he supposed to recognize those names? Cool fingers, breath scented with chocolate. Mick's head throbbed. Yeah, yeah, you love him. He gets it, Dave said, shooing him out. He's about to toss his cookies. You do not want to be here for that. Just in time. Mick's stomach clenched. No one wanted to be here for this, including him. Here, Dave pressed an emesis basin into Mick's hand. Common side effect of concussion. You'll feel better soon. The ten hellacious minutes later, Mick's head still felt like it was going to explode. He needed those cool, soft fingers. Liar, he rasped. Only when necessary, Dave said. You won't remember anyway, come tomorrow. He hit the button on the blood pressure monitor and the cuff inflated, squeezing his good arm. Even that hurt. Promise? Sure, Dave said. Finally, it was quiet. Blissful oblivion called, and he followed. His bed jostled, pulling him back. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Dave said. No sleeping. It's test time. No studying required. I hate you. I get the law. I get that a lot, the nurse said. 